was broken. His friend had died. This was not the plan. You can move him to do something about it. You don't have to just keep your feelings away from God. Hello guys, welcome and welcome back to Gospel Everyday YouTube channel. Please do also subscribe to this YouTube channel and you'll be getting a fine content weekly. Today and throughout this month, we are going to be talking about the Godly character. We are going to be discussing about Jesus. You know, as Christians, we are supposed to live like Jesus, do the things that he does, react the way he reacts. And we are going to be studying the Bible and also talking about these things so that we could be better Christians, we will be able to shine our light in the world. You know, the, the part of the righteous gets brighter and brighter to the perfect day. Nobody is perfect, yes, it's true, but we are working towards that perfection. And that is what the study is basically going to be about, working on our characters. And today I'm going to be talking about depression, as God would have me to do. So, first of all, depression is something that is always used people always talk about depression and i went further to, to learn about what depression really is depression is a mental state that someone can be in it's a mental state of sadness unhappiness and hopelessness so it is also like a disorder forget the fact that everybody like oh, i'm depressed this that depression is actually deeper than what people just say it is it's more deeper and more extreme than sadness that goes on in our day-to-day -day activity. I'll also talk about frustration in the way because then we can't talk about depression without talking about frustration and anger and sadness and all that. Now, you know, we're talking about Jesus, right? Because we want to be like him. So definitely we have to read from the word of God. I'm going to be reading from Matthew chapter 26. And from 36, I'm going to tell you a story about what happened to Jesus when he was sad. Verse 36 says, Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee. Grief and anguish came over him. I love this Bible passage because it said grief and anguish. That means he was in serious. It was, in a, it was in a serious place of pain. And he said to them, The sorrow in my heart is so great that it almost crushes me. Stay here and keep watching me. Imagine Jesus saying stuff like, The sorrow in my heart is so great, it's about to crush me. And what did he do? What was his response to this? It was to pray. <laughs> he went a little further and threw himself face downwards on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, take this cup of suffering from me. Yet, not what I want but what you want. Then he returned to the three disciples and found them asleep and he said to Peter, how is it that you, you, you three were not able to watch with me even for one hour? Keep watch and pray that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing but the flesh is weak. I meant to tell you today that if you are going through serious anguish, sadness, sorrow, you know, just the way Jesus was feeling then, he was about to be crucified for a crime that he did not commit. Just imagine the anger in his body. And his response to it was not locking himself up in a room and thinking or listening to sad music because that would have only increased the problem. He went to the place of prayer. And I want to let you know what happened in verse 42. He kept on telling God to take away the cup from him. And after everything, he had peace. He turned to his disciples. Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come for the Son of Man. This is when he received the peace that he has to do this. He has to fulfill this. And from then, he told them to get up. They have to go. They left. And they continued with, he continued with fulfilling what he, he had come to fulfill. To die on the cross for us so that he can save us. So that there will be no more barrier between us and him. In John chapter 11 verse 35, it was recorded that Jesus wept. Imagine, God wept. Even God wept. Because of his heart was broken. His friend had died. This was not the plan, but he wept. But I want you to, to, to get something from this story. John chapter 11 verse 35. He asked them, where have you buried him? And they told him, Lord, come and see. And Jesus wept. 
People were saying, see how much he loved him. But some of them said, he gave sight to the blind man, didn't he? Could he not have kept Lazarus from dying? Jesus was deeply moved. I wanted to, to, hear, to see what Jesus did before he, before he did anything. In verse 41, he says, They took the stone away. Jesus looked up and said, I thank you, Father, that you listened to me. I know that you always listen to me. And he prayed after thanking God. So this was a, a time where he was feeling pain. But he, he was teaching us that even when you are feeling pain or anything, you can talk to God about it. You can, you can move him to do something about it. You don't have to just keep your feelings away from God. God is interested in your feeling. He understands what you feel. He understands your pain, your sadness, your anguish, and your sorrow. He understands it. And that's why he, he, he came, so that he would teach us this way to follow. That even in the place of sorrow, he could still pray. He could still thank God. This was two keys I got from depression. That when you are feeling sad and getting into that stage of this mental disorder, you can always thank God for everything he has done. Look at the bright side and you will see multiplication rather than subtraction. When you, are, you allow yourself to enter into the feeling of depression, frustration, you actually lose things. You don't get anything. You lose your joy. And as Christians, God wants us to be people that have joy. That's why he gave us his spirit. The Bible says in Galatians 5 verse 22 that the fruit of the spirit is love and joy and peace. This is what God wants us to have. Second Timothy 1 verse 7 said that the Lord has not given us the spirit of fear, but of sound mind. So when that fear comes, like, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Look at my life. Look at everything. We see the spirit of God, the spirit of peace. Through, the, through prayer and through thanksgiving, we see your inheritance in God. Do not allow the devil to steal your joy from you. Because when he steals your joy, he's stealing your progress. Hallelujah. I hope that you've been blessed by this. If you are going through anything in your life, just know that you're not the first person to go through it and you can overcome it. Yes, Timon, please stick around. We'll be sharing other things, the attributes of Jesus, learning how to live like Jesus, learning the godly character. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Don't forget to like, comment, and share this video. God bless you. Don't forget that Jesus loves you.